I'm Jennifer Glensky, Director of Product Management in BMC Innovation Labs. I'm joined by esteemed moderator, Britton Fraley, Distinguished Technology Strategist. A reminder that what we talk about today may change in the future. So let's get into it. Did you know the world spent over $215 billion on big data and analytics solutions last year? That's roughly the size of New Zealand's entire GDP. New Zealand happens to be my favorite unit of measurement and coincidentally is where I grew up. Naturally, enterprises want these large investments in data and analytics to pay off. Unfortunately, a significant number of data and analytics programs fail to meet expectations. Only 40% of firms are managing data as an asset. In order to monetize data, you need pipelines to get data from the source into the hands of people who can do something with it. And what we're seeing is almost half of these big data projects to do just that are failing. 19% of firms consider themselves to be data driven. That means they are using data to make decisions. But if half of all big data projects are failing, they could be using bad data to inform those decisions. Why then are so many of these data and analytics programs failing? There are several reasons why these programs could fail. Starting with the exploding number of data sources due to new types of data or more complex business models that make simplification difficult or challenges in deploying to production at scale with high expectations on speed, flexibility, and customization. A lack of collaboration among different teams involved in the project doesn't help, nor does a process mismatch where traditional data management practices and processes don't work as well with newer techniques such as AI. We're also seeing a limited talent pool in the industry since data analytics teams require a combination of both internal domain knowledge and deep technical knowledge. These data and analytics projects require a significant investment, and there's a risk of becoming overly focused on the latest technology at the expense of delivering value or organizational readiness. And lastly, there may be an unclear approach to measure success since many benefits are observed in other teams' performances, especially for foundational initiatives. Phew, these are hefty problems to solve. BMC is focused on helping customers overcome the top three challenges by connecting the exploding number of data sources, addressing challenges in deploying to production at scale, and improving collaboration among teams. What happens then when you remove these barriers? When we solve these challenges, we see BMC's customers making a difference in the world through their successful data and analytics programs. They are saving more lives by analyzing hospital operations data. They are building AI that could help panicking college students recover their 10 page paper when their computer crashes the night before it's due. And they're freeing up space in the London underground for cute new shops and cafes, in turn, making someone's morning commute that little bit nicer with a hot cup of tea and a biscuit. Mm, I could go for one of those. Of course, this is only a tiny taste of all the ingenious ways BMC's customers are improving the world through data. How can organizations get more of these projects into production? Luckily, data ops has emerged to help organizations overcome challenges and increase the number of successful data and analytics programs out in the world. What is data ops then? Data ops applies agile and software development best practices to managing data pipelines. This helps engineering and data teams deliver reliable, high quality data to the people who need it when they need it. A key reason why organizations need data ops is because the data pipelines required to feed these data and analytics projects can be very complex. 
The sheer number of tasks and connections involved in a data pipeline can be intimidating. Take this image, for example. It's a real data pipeline with tons of different data tables and jobs spread across multiple environments. And this is only a single data pipeline. When you scale up to larger, more complex organizations, navigating and managing data pipelines becomes tremendously complex and difficult to solve. A large company could have 20,000 data pipelines with 5,000 data scientists around the globe consuming thousands of data sources. All this complexity provides endless ways for data pipelines to break, especially when changes are introduced by different people in different points in the process. Fortunately, through experience in software development and IT operations, BMC has learned how to manage other highly complex systems and is applying those lessons learned to the unique environment around data pipelines. We know data ops takes the best practices from software development and IT ops and applies them to data pipelines. What does this look like? This includes automation and orchestration, which allow you to move data from data sources as shown on the left side of this diagram, which could include structured, streaming, or IoT data, and allows you to move that all the way through the data pipelines in the center, all the way to your data consumers as shown on the right side of this diagram. Those data consumers could include analytics, reporting, or my personal favorite, data science. Unfortunately, manual efforts alone just cannot keep up with managing the immense volume of data generated in enterprises today. Let's take a look at an example in your typical enterprise to see why. Consider this scenario, which illustrates some of the challenges data professionals face when they try to manage data pipelines manually. I'd like to introduce you to Jane here. She is a data analyst who has been asked to create a report to show how different groups of customers change their spending over time. This is based on a true story. I started my career out as a data analyst and used to live this every day. So I got this story from a friend. Jane wants to build her report and believes she can use data from the data warehouse that the data engineering team maintains to feed her report in a dashboard where her end consumers, including her boss, can view it. Now she knows the revenue data in the data warehouse shows when and what customers bought, but it doesn't have a way to group the customers how she needs to. The data warehouse also does not track annual recurring revenue, which is a key calculation she needs for her report. To create this report, Jane builds a SQL query into the data warehouse to get revenue data by customer. She then creates a Python script to calculate the annual recurring revenue or ARR by customer and a last script to group everything together. She then imports that aggregate file into a reporting server to make her report available. And finally, Jane uses a scheduler to tie all of these tasks into a pipeline to feed her report with fresh data every Monday morning. So far, so good, right? Sadly, Jane's problems are only beginning. Her data pipeline actually starts with data coming from three different systems. Customers, sales, and finance. These systems all feed into the data warehouse that Jane is using, and the people managing these systems make changes and updates from time to time, which is fair, things change. For example, the finance team updates their revenue categories to include a brand new category for SaaS revenue. Now, Jane's ARR calculation script has no way of knowing that there's suddenly a new revenue category. So it misses the SAS revenue completely, and Jane's report ends up showing incomplete data without her realizing it. Jane also doesn't know that finance added a new revenue category, and therefore doesn't even know there's a problem. 
All she knows is that her scripts continue to run successfully. She doesn't have a way of catching that important data is missing. How does Jane find out that this problem exists then? Her scripts are running fine without any errors. In the worst case, Jane's data consumers, like a customer or her boss, are the first ones to notice there is something wrong with the report. They're not sure what's going on, but all of the revenue numbers look off and they don't match the numbers they're seeing in other reports. So now they don't trust Jane's report. This is not a great day to be Jane. I will tell you a secret. I have been Jane before and it's not fun. In another case, Jane notices a problem when she goes back to update her pipeline, but that could be weeks later. And who knows what poor decisions people have been making based on her report in the meantime. Also, not a great situation to be in. Eventually, a couple weeks later, after Jane's users have begun to lose trust in her report, mind you, Jane finally knows a problem exists. But she's at square one trying to figure out what went wrong. She has to investigate what caused the issue, which takes a fair amount of time and multiple interactions with the engineering team who look into it and point her in the direction of the finance team. Well, then she goes through the whole process again with the finance team, explaining the problem, asking who might know someone something about it, finding that person, getting in touch with them. Eventually, she talks to Maria in finance, who tells Jane about the new revenue category. And Jane figures out, aha, that is what caused my problem. Now that Jane knows there's a new revenue category, she has to update her ARR calculation script to include the new SAS category. That took a long time to find, but the fix was pretty quick. Well, then a little while later, Jane learns that the data warehouse team built an official ARR calculation into the data warehouse. She smartly decides to use that field instead of calculating her own going forward, which makes sense. We don't really want everyone calculating their own version of the same thing. To do that, Jane will need to update her query script. She will also need to get rid of her calculation script since she won't be using that anymore. She says, bye-bye script that I worked so hard on and tosses that in the bin. Next, she needs to update her aggregate script since there's no more intermediate calculation script. And lastly, she needs to update the scheduler to skip running the calculation script and go directly from the query to the aggregate script. Yikes. Now this is getting complicated and messy and still relies on Jane scouring the organization, trying to find out when other teams make changes in their area that could impact her report. This isn't scalable or sustainable in the long run. And remember, this is only a single small pipeline with three data sources, three scripts, and one little report. Multiply this complexity by 20,000 tasks, 16,000 pipelines, or 3,000 data sources, and you begin to get an appreciation for the scale of the problem that enterprises face. Thinking about what we can learn from Jane's experience, BMC recognizes that pipeline failures are often caused by a change to the data or the workflow and users need a way to catch them. Ultimately, the root of the problem for Jane is a lack of automation and observability in her pipeline. This is why automation and observability are critical to the success of data ops. You need automation to help reduce errors in the first place, and you need observability to catch any issues that sneak into your pipeline. You want to catch them all. This is BMC's diagram of the data ops model we saw earlier. And we can see now where pipeline automation and observability fit into it. What BMC is doing in data ops is two-pronged. We are continually enhancing Control-M 
to be the best data ops orchestration solution. And we are building new data observability solutions to focus on data quality and root cause analysis. We know we need automation and orchestrators are how you automate pipelines. They are the backbone of the data environment and pipeline automation. Why? Because orchestrators organize all the activities to ingest, transform, and deliver data. We're fortunate in that BMC offers a world-class orchestrator available in Control-M. With Control-M, you can use a single interface to create and monitor your data pipelines. This gives you better utilization of analytics resources from reusability and more frequent and flexible delivery of prepared data. Consider Jane. She would save time by not having to update and manage all of her scripts separately, and she could use that time saved to build a whole other dashboard or perhaps finally watch that tutorial on machine learning that she has bookmarked. BMC's Control-M also enables better collaboration across data teams and provides an end-to-end -end view of the path of data as it moves from team to team. With this, Jane would easily be able to see that her data came from the specific finance system, and she could collaborate with the finance team directly to uncover the root cause of the missing revenue so much faster. Orchestration is a big deal to data ops, but that's not all that BMC is working on. BMC is also focused on building out capabilities to complement Control-M and expand our data ops solutions. First, we've seen how pipeline automation with Control-M would help James save time and deliver data faster and more reliably. Second, James needs data observability to find and fix problems that sneak into her pipeline and ensure she is delivering high quality data to her end users. BMC is working on that next. Third, BMC sees value in pipeline optimization to control costs and help Jane optimize the health and performance of her pipeline. Now, in Jane's case, she could use BMC's Control-M to automate and orchestrate her pipeline. This would save her time on scripting, reduce coding errors, and shorten her development timeline. Orchestration is the backbone of the pipeline and provides the end-to-end -end connectivity. Orchestration alone, however, doesn't solve all of Jane's problems. The next data ops solution that BMC is building, focused on data observability, will help Jane identify issues in her pipeline and support root cause analysis to improve data quality. She'll be able to detect changes and problems in her data before they make it into her report. Jane's happy now and so are her consumers who rely on her report to make important business decisions. Imagine all the cool things that could be if the other half of all those failed data and analytics projects were successful. The impact could be as big as saving your aging parents from cancer or as small as discovering your next favorite band. And BMC with DataOps will help you get there. As we're going on this exciting journey, we already have eager customers speaking with us. Are you interested in joining the conversation? We're always excited to have additional design partners, advisors, and co-innovators. Contact us at innovate at bmc.com to join the data ops revolution. Thank you.